I mean, this one uh, generally deserves a clap. Uh, look, religious, as I was initially referring to my, my point about the identity, uh, part of our identity crisis is that we think that we have monopolized the question of identity and it has to take inspiration from the faith of Islam. Uh, what sort of Muslim are you? Are you an Ahle Hadith Muslim or a Brailvi Muslim or an Ahle Tashi Muslim or Deobandi Muslim? So on and so forth. All these sub identities of those so sub uh, sectors of identity creates further confusion. So, what is the, the position of Hindus among us or Christians among us or Ahmadis among us, which we by law have, have divorced them from the main faith? Uh, and then, uh, how do you bring that inclusiveness into this question of identity? And how do you project if there is a nation building, which he was referring to, and how could you articulate that uh, new branding of Pakistan? Or is it even needed? Is it even required? Or does the rest of the nations have taken that course? Answer to all of these questions is, Yes, we, we need to do that. How do we do it? I think so we have to do it in a very wise manner. I am a follower uh, and a fan of Iqbal. And I am very much fortunate that I had access to read him in Persian. Uh, in one of his couplet, he says, Guft hikmat ra khuda khayre kaseer that God has declared wisdom as an abandoned good. If he, if he gives wisdom to someone, he has bestowed him with abundance good. So whatever we do, we need to do it wisely. When I say we need to do it wisely, I mean the most sacrosanct thing in any society is social order. Look at the early 13 years of the Prophet, uh, he faced all kind of persecutions, but he did not challenge the social order. I mean, he was excluded from, from uh, the society, he was physically attacked, he was challenged on the ideas which he believed were truthful, and the people who were representing according to him the falsehood ideas were more dominant, they were uh, uh, part of the group of the oppressors, tyranny, but he did not challenge the social order. So there is a sanctity and sacrosanct status of social order. Whenever, whenever you want to transform such thing, you keep that at the back of your mind that while keeping this social order, how do you transform those values, those systems in a way, in a manner where the peaceful coexistence is morphed in a way that the jolts are unfelt. The jolts are not there where the disintegration uh, or the chance of the disintegration is there. Who would lead such a journey? You, him, he, me, all of us. All of us has to contribute and think about it. Uh, that's why my request to those jingoistic youngsters who just want to change everything with this one election day, good, go and, and vote that day definitely. But changes, they evolve. They evolve, uh, they are uh, uh, gelled in, sometime in decades, sometime even in centuries. So we have to be profound, we have to be deep, and we have to represent the true soul of ours, whatever it is. So let's explore first ourselves in honesty and then reflect ourselves what we believe in. Thank you. Lee Chanda. As Assalamu alaikum, Honorable Alaykum. Prime Minister. Um, it's very heartening to hear you coming over here, the Premier of the country, and saying and encouraging us that LUM students, we seek knowledge, we seek originality. Um, it's very heartening, but then I 
hearken back to earlier times, a few months ago, right at the start of your tenureship, when you talked about the social contract, you talked about the Pakistan social contract with its citizens, it should, be, it should only have a primary purpose, that is to ensure law and order. And I believe that goes against the very statement you gave right now about encouraging originality and seeking knowledge and giving an enabling environment. I believe in order to give an enabling environment to the youth of this nation, there has to be two things, freedom of expression and freedom from discrimination. I believe we here, LUM students, people of, of a very, very privileged class, both in terms of socioeconomic class and religious caste as well, we aren't at the same level and we don't, and the le level freedom of expression we have cannot ever compare to, to, to the youth out in South Punjab, out, out, in, out in Karachi, those Afghan refugees, we can, they can never compare to us. So how do you feel that a social contract that is based on law and order primary, as a primary purpose, can ever ensure those two things to make sure that the rest of our youth actually get a chance to have an enabling environment? First of all, I, I understand your presumption of uh, feeling privileged and at times uh, uh, even as a victim of that available privilege. This, this is a kind of a syndrome many individuals go through and they feel. Negra Wazir Azam, Anwarul Haq Kakar, Lums Me, Talaba Ke Saad, Iswa Guftugu Kar Rahe. And Azeen, we will talk about news break, but we will talk about it.